The housing market crash just got cancelled. Despite in the face of looming recession, rate hikes, steady inflation, and unimaginable interest rate, real estate prices remain unreachable due to low supply comparing to demand. A viral tweet suggesting Airbnb host revenue has drastically dropped. Does this mean an influx of short-term rental properties flooding the market could drive the home prices down? Even when a major insurance company leaves the second-ranked state out of 11 states that saw major home price surges in the last couple of years, demand for home ownership remains strong. With a recent housing survey from Federal Reserve Bank of New York reporting 69.7% of renters would prefer or strongly prefer owning a home. Slash rates on mortgages and refinancing during the Fed rate cuts throughout the pandemic left many homeowners unwilling to sacrifice 2% to 4% interest rates to accept a near 7% or higher mortgage rates on a new home. To combat the lack of inventory, many potential home buyers stretching their budgets to pursue new constructions instead. New construction construction home builders are supporting the increase in housing supply. However, the housing supply is still struggling to meet those demands. Look, I think we got to remember that in the housing market, you're looking at a fundamental shortage of housing. Uh, there's demand <clears throat> that has been underlying uh, the market in general. Uh, there was a great deal of sticker shock as interest rates adjusted rather aggressively. I think that the buying public has become uh, used to what it, what I think of as a new normal in interest rates. Uh, people need a place to live and demand is starting to come back to market. Uh, but affordability remains an issue. So uh, while at the same time we have a housing shortage, demand is strong, but only as people can afford to buy. So home buyers who are willing to accept high interest rate could also face competition. In today's video of who wants to be a homeowner, I will go over the factors that are keeping the home prices sky high, what it means for you if you're a first time home buyer or a home buyer in general, and what the future holds. Hi, my name is Sasura Mirz. I'm a realtor and a diversified investor based in South Florida. And on this channel, I supply finance related videos to meet demand. Feel free to jump around the timestamp below if you'd like to save some time. And while you're down there, consider hitting the like and subscribe button below. The housing market has been in turmoil since 2022 due to high inflation, skyrocketing rentals and mortgage rates, and a surge in demand amplified by a shortage of houses. The Federal Reserve had been on a 15-month rate hiking streak to control inflation but decided to pause in June. Though further rate hikes are expected, despite this, home prices have remained high, which impacted the housing market. A starter home is typically how a first-time home buyer becomes a homeowner and starts building equity. But for millennials and Gen Z buyers, buying a starter home may be a thing of the past, as hinted by CNBC Make It. Zillow defines starter home as one with one or two bedrooms, one bathroom, and 750 to 1200 square feet of space. The typical starter home was priced at $179,407 as of May. However, only 11% of homes sold in the first quarter of 2022 were below $300,000, as per CNBC Make It. According to a data from National Associations of Realtors, nearly 40% of Americans between the ages of 25 and 40 who bought a home last year plan to stay in the house for at least 16 years. Zillow reported that competition for affordable entry-level homes is intense, especially for low-income families. In 2021, 8 million families were living with non relatives in a home that they themselves didn't own or rent, and most families had an annual household income of $35,000. Zillow stated that the country is short of 4.3 million homes, which is why these families are unable to find homes they can afford. Jessica Lutz, NAR Deputy Chief Economist and Vice President of Research, told CNBC Make the idea of purchasing an entry-level home, waiting for it to appreciate in value, and then selling it after five years has gone out of the window. She said that those who purchased a home last year are now locked into a low mortgage rate. As of July 6, data from Freddie Mac showed that average interest rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage was 6.8 percent from 5.3 percent a year ago. Principal economist at CoreLogic Molly Bazell indicated 80 percent of homeowners have a mortgage rate under 4 percent, and there's little to no incentive to sell, as previously reported by Go Back in Rates. Housing inventory is trending on an upward climb with over 613,000 active listings reported in June's data from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. A June 27th release from Craig J. Lazara, managing director of S&P DJI, stated the national composite of home 
home prices rose by 1.3% in April, repeating March's performance, and now stands only 2.4% below its June's 2022 peak. U.S. Census Bureau data indicated that the number of home sales has increased month over month from 625,000 in February to 763,000 in May. Real estate analytics firm Altos Research observes that while there's more demand than supply, particularly in the real estate market, this won't necessarily dissolve in the current situation changes. High mortgage rates have already dampened home buying momentum, and any further increase could cause a sudden halt in purchases. Three key housing market indicators are pointing towards a healthy market. Data from Redfin shows an 8.1% drop in active listing at the end of June compared to the previous year. This indicates a pullback in supply relative to demand, leading to bidding wars in some parts of the country. With a significant shortage of resale homes, new home sales are on the rise. Builder sentiment has been positive with a steady increase in home building activity. The price gap between new and existing homes has fallen to 4%, making new homes more affordable in buyers' eyes. Altos research highlights that fewer homeowners are reducing prices, pointing towards a strong buyer interest. There's no current indication of a price crash, even if the recession hits towards the end of the year. And if you don't want this video to crash, consider hitting the like and subscribe button below. Unlike the housing market, the prices for like and subscribe button are pretty affordable. As of January 2023, sales of existing home had fallen over 12 months straight, while the medium home price stood at 359000 from 1.3% increase from January 2022, promising signs were seen with the rise of pending sales and drop in mortgage rates due to Silicon Valley Bank's impact. However, affordability remains an issue, particularly for those earning $75,000 or less who could afford a home for $256,000. However, homes at this price or less made up only 23% of the existing home listing in April 2023. Many economists predict that housing market is more likely to correct itself from a recent significant significant jump in home prices rather than crash. The S&P CoreLogic Case-Shiller Home Price Index shows the housing market has experienced its correction and now is on the path to recovery. Despite increased foreclosures, experts don't foresee a foreclosure wave in 2023. In May, foreclosure filing were up 7% from April and 14% from last year. But this trends align with expectation. The pandemic and resulting work-from-home trend has seen homeowners from northern metro areas relocating to the Sun Belt leading to rising home prices in these regions. Last year, Florida witnessed a surge in home prices ranking second among 11 states with more than 20% price increase in the first quarter as per Moody's analytics. However, this trend could reverse since Farmers Insurance's decision to stop issuing new coverages in Florida, including auto, home, and umbrella insurance. It's raising alarm among real estate experts about the potential end of state's housing boom. The company is the fourth major insurance firm to pull out from Florida. Prime primarily due to hurricane risks. This move, which is anticipated to impact 100,000 policies, could destabilize the state's housing market, which has been able to maintain high prices in the face of inflation and Federal Reserve interest rate hikes. Professor Itzhak Ben David, a finance professor at Fisher College of Business at Ohio State University, suggests that the withdrawal of major insurance company could significantly impact the housing market. The rise in insurance costs and difficulty in securing coverage might deter potential homeowners, potentially leading to a drop in property value. This could result in a rise in forced sales and mortgage default, driving property prices lower. A viral tweet from Nick Gurley, CEO of Reventure Consulting, suggesting Airbnb host revenue had drastically dropped. Many hope that this situation could be alleviated by downfall of Airbnb's business and an increase in houses coming into the market. However, the data from Airbnb and other sources like AirDNA contradict this theory. Even a significant decline in Airbnb's business wouldn't necessarily resolve the housing market market issue. With home prices at near record unaffordability and home buying at its most challenging due to high prices and mortgage rates, the fundamental problem lies in the lack of housing supply. Factors contributing to the limited supply including insufficient new home constructions since the Great Recession, setbacks due to the pandemic and supply chain issues, and the reluctance of current homeowners to put their houses on the market due to escalating home prices and mortgage rates. Short-term rentals such as Airbnb represents a 
small fraction of the total housing units and contributes modestly to the increase in the housing prices. To generally increase the housing supply and stabilize prices, more new constructions are required, which could be facilitated by lower interest rates, reducing construction costs, labor shortage solution, and more flexible zoning regulations. Therefore, the potential decline of Airbnb and the short-term rental market wouldn't offer a significant solution to the current housing shortage. If you're wondering how to build generational wealth through real estate, watch this video here. There you have it. The housing market is grappling with an unaffordability crisis despite signs of weakening home prices. If you're in the market to buy a house given the current condition, I would advise all potential home buyers to be prepared and flexible by keeping your finances in order and exploring lower price housing markets if necessary and buy based on your budgets and needs rather than trying to time the market. I would refrain from buying a house that may not be affordable in the long run. And for sellers, I would advise price your homes correctly and prepare their property for sale well in advance to attract potential buyers. Leave a comment if you're in the market to buy a house or sell a house and what price changes have you seen in your specific market. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button below so we can meet again. As always, if you like the vibe, join the tribe. Thank you for hanging out with me. See you in the next video. The Federal Reserve had been on a 15-month rate hiking streak to control streak, 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 streak. As of July 6th, as of